Hello and welcome back. After seeing yet another post on social media about how runners should strive to move as little as possible up and down and as proof proof published a film of an elite runner where a line is drawn at the runner's head where it looks like it moves very little up and down. And how I thought it would be good to clarify how this works. It takes a lot of energy to move your body up and down, of course. I've talked about this so many times. It can therefore be useful to know how much you move up and down. You can then ask yourself which body part should you actually measure when you're measuring this up and down movement. Is it how much the head moves? But if I for some reason run like this, the movement of the head will not correspond with the movement of the rest of my body. Well, is it perhaps the position of your belly button? Now, when you calculate this, it's the movement up and down of your center of mass. That's it. The tricky thing is that the center of mass is invisible to the naked eye and also moves to different parts of the body depending on what you do with the other parts of the body, like arms and legs. The center of mass moves around. This is very clear if we look at a basketball player. Some basketball players seem to jump up and then just mostly hang in the air and move towards the basket where the head seems to move almost in a completely straight line forward. But if you know anything about biomechanics, you know that the central mass cannot move horizontally. It will go in an arc like this and that is no matter how long time Michael Jordan keeps his head at the same level where he hangs when he's doing his slam dunk. But this is how it works. We can now look at this basketball player. It's a really bad basketball player because it's just me. These are the three faces of my jump towards the basket. I have drawn here how the center of mass moves. That's the red line. As you can see it moves in an arc. But where it is in my body depends on where my other body parts are. So when I have bent my knees the center of mass is higher up in the body but the head remains at the same height. So depending on how much a runner moves the arms and the legs up and down in different positions the center of mass will be in different places in the body which can give the illusion that a head is more still than the center of mass is. Well, it's not an illusion because the head is still in the same place. The head is more still than the center of mass is. And it's the movement of your center of mass that costs energy. I have also made several measurements of elite runners movement up and down with an accuracy of a tenth of a millimeter. So I actually know exactly how much they move their center of mass, which is the important part. And in addition, downward movements after placing the foot on the ground gives a completely different impression of movement and weight compared to upwards movement after the push-off. Two exactly equal movements in height can thus give completely different impressions on how big the movements actually are. When you move less down at mid stance, when you have put your foot on the ground, you don't move that much down, you just go boom, like this. You probably have shorter contact time and get more elastic recoil and energy return from the elastic parts of the body via the so-called stretch shortening cycle. It's very common that runners that I meet and I show films of their running before and after I help them with some adjustments and they say oh it looks like I have lost 15 kilos 33 pounds after they have received the instructions. But they weigh exactly the same of course and it can also be that they move their center of mass ex the exact amount 
up and down on both films. The same movement, but completely different impressions of both weight and how much they move up and down. Therefore, just looking at a runner's head to judge how much they are moving up and down and trying to judge the movement just by how light it looks and how much they collapse when they have the foot on the ground, it's completely idiotic as the collapsing runners always appear to have more movement even if this is not the case. And how about complicating things even more? You may think that you know how much you move up and down because you have a watch that tells you. Vertical oscillation is usually the name for it. But the number that you see on your watch is probably not accurate at all. Usually the watch measures the vertical oscillation by how much your heart rate monitor that you have in a strap around your chest moves up and down. And this is definitely not the same thing as how much your center of mass moves. Now my center of mass is here and my heart rate monitor is here. But if I lift my knee and my hand, my center of mass is now higher up in the body, but the heart rate monitor hasn't moved. Same thing with this picture. The heart rate monitor is at the same level, but the center of mass is still moving in an arc. And like I said, it's the movement up and down of the center of mass that costs energy and it's that you have to use when you calculate energy expenditure. Not how much your head or your heart rate monitor moves. Complicated, right? It would be much better if there was only right or wrong and everything was black and white and uncomplicated. But that's exactly why I make these videos. To complicate everything you thought you knew about running technique as much as possible. You're welcome. I truly hope you liked that video and if you did please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button. And feel free to check out all the other content I have here on my channel. And maybe you are also interested in my online course. You'll find it at fredrickzillen.com.